Hey everybody, Mike B here with another top five video. Today, as per popular demand, in the top five surplus rifles under $500 in 2022, we are going to be covering the top five surplus handguns under $500 in 2022, as a bunch of people requested in the comments. So here we are. This list is a lot harder to do because handguns are just generally more expensive than long guns, it's both that way in the surplus world and the civilian world. But also, supplies are drying up. There's a lot of countries that are completely out of the old school surplus that can still be imported before they went to select fire weapons, blah, 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 blah. I've explained that in other videos. I won't rant too long now. My sources are not mainstream sources. I've said that in many videos, and if you listen carefully to what I say, you'll know where to find these things, mostly on forums with other firearm collectors and uh, auction sites that are not called Gun Broker. And also you can go to local gun stores. Sometimes at a gun show you get a good deal on this old surplus gun because uh, some people still haven't adapted to the internet. So those are some of my sources that I get these things from and these are the prices that I've seen them going for in the past year or so, even with everything getting crazy. So a minute of ranting over and a little bit of context. I know I try to do that for every video because otherwise you guys are gonna go, where do you find these? Where do you find these prices? It's $10,000 here. Well. I've been doing this for a couple decades now, and I have my little hidey holes. So, some of these guns are going to be a little bit harder to find, which is factored into their ranking on the list, but generally I think you guys are going to be pretty happy. So, one that has never made the list before, but is actually in the running for this year's top five, one of the top five positions, is the Spanish, or in this case French contract, Ruby Pistol in 32 ACP. So these guys are actually quite common. France sold a ton of these to the United States in the 1960s. And uh, a lot of you know gun companies in the U.S. didn't like that, U.S. gun manufacturers. So uh, because it flooded the market with cheap handguns that are okay, they work. They're kind of like the AK of 32 caliber pistols. They're big, bulky, but they work. And they're fun to shoot. Now, the only reason I put this down there is because you have to find a collector or something. This is just an insane rabbit hole on itself, these pistols right here. So these were manufactured in Spain for the French during the First World War. And I'm not even going to go down the rabbit hole. But these retail, which is the important part, for between $300 and $450 for an average example like this. There's really nothing special about this at all. It's... Um, it's an MB manufacturer, so oh, this is not going to focus. My bad. So there you can just see the details from afar. Anyway, again, I'll, I'll make a separate video on this, but these things fire 32 ACP, which is a common cartridge. It's just not widely available right now due to the current circumstances. But the price point is what makes this a really good little gun. And they're pretty comfortable. If you've got bigger hands, it's actually a nice little 32 pistol to shoot. Pretty easy to handle. So that's going to be our number five pick because of that. And it's also number five because the magazines are kind of hard to find for you have to get it from the specific manufacturer and sometimes they won't fit your gun. And 32 is a little bit more expensive now. But nevertheless, this is kind of an unheard of treasure, except for other certain gun channels that like to um, talk about French guns a lot. But anyway, we won't get into that. So this is number five on our list. We'll move on to number four right now. Voila, number four. We've got the Czechoslovakian VZ-50 semi-automatic pistol and 32 automatic Colt pistol as well. Two thirty-two caliber pistols made it this year. So these were kind of designed in 1950 and late 1940s and all that stuff. And then later became the VZ-52 pistol. And uh, without getting too much into it, these were available. And they still pop up every now and then in small batches. These pop up for between, depending on like it's a shooter grade like this, $250 to $400. But usually it's $250 to $350 for a, an average pistol like this. An average example. Nothing really special about it. This is actually a police contract, I believe. It's not really military marked. But nevertheless, great little shooters. They're very small, very compact. They hold eight rounds in the magazine. And they're pretty cool. They're not as readily available as they were, but the price point is still there if you can find them. So, you know, just like the Ruby, it's a nice little handgun to have. It did, you know, 32 used to be pretty affordable. It should come back around again. But, yeah, the magazines are a little bit kind of hard to get. And also you can get the updated version of this, the VZ-70. But the reason I like the VZ-50 a little bit better is because it's Kiro and Relic firearm eligible. So if you have a collector's license like I do, you can get this shipped right to your collection, a.k.a. your door. So that's a really fun thing about the VZ-50, but the VZ-70 is going to perform about the same, and those are usually available that you just have to go through an 01 FFL. So that's why this is number four on the list, is because it's a nice little pistol. It's pretty historical, too, if you like Cold War surplus stuff. It's nice. They work. This thing's actually very accurate and very fun to shoot, very light on the recoil. So with that, we'll move on to our number three choice. 
All right, number three on the list is one that makes my list just about every single year because they're still actually out there. They pop up in batches from various small hidey hole dealers, and they are probably my favorite variant of this platform of pistol ever made. We've got the Yugoslavian M57 chambered in 7.62 by 25 millimeter Tokarev, which is a nice round if you don't know about it. It's a really hot little round, very fun. Used to be available with surplus, but you can get commercial stuff. And uh, word has it, I know there's rust on here. Oh God! Actually, I didn't even notice that until right now. It was. You know, I know you guys can crucify me in the comments. I got a little bit of, a little bit of surface rust on here. Oh no! Anyway, um, yeah. So these things are great. I like them because of the magazine capacity. They hold one more round than the standard eight on the TTC or TT33 series, and that means the pistol grip is a little bit longer, which makes guys with ogre hands like me. A little bit more comfortable shooting this thing as a regular Tokarev pistol. Just a little bit short on the grip, but not nothing too bad. So these things were used from 1957 up through the early 2000s by some units, and these are still being used. In the, they've been commercially reproduced as well. Uh, Zastava makes these in 9mm. I think it's called the M70 or something like that. And those are commercially available as well. Now, this was this not, not this particular one, but this was my first handgun ever purchased. And I fell in love with it immediately. All my friends loved it. And the price point is still really good. You can get one of these in shooter grade for about $250 to $350, right? For a pistol, that's not bad at all. Especially one that fires a nice round like this. They're really fun. They're reliable. I've had a lot of success with all these all these toe grips. I love this platform in general, but the price point is what really makes this thing great. And it's a cool conversation piece because it looks weird. Not everybody has seen one of these before. But once they shoot it, they're going to fall in love with it just like I did and all my friends did. So... Yeah, number three on the list is going to be the Yugoslavian M57 Tokra. The reason it didn't score a little bit higher is because the magazines are specialized. You have to get the special nine-round magazines. You can use the nine-round magazines in a regular TTC or TT33 series eight-round capacity handgun, but you cannot use the eight-rounders. They won't make it. They'll only make it up to about there, and they won't actually feed. So that kind of sucks, and they're a little bit more expensive because of that. If you can source those nine-round magazines, though, absolutely. I love this thing over every other Tokra series that was ever made. So, number three on our list, the Yugoslavian M57 Tokarev. So, number two on the list is going to look a little familiar if you've watched any of my previous top five videos in the past couple years. This one, a lot of people really hate it, and I don't really understand why. Everybody that I've let shoot this is like, wow, that's actually pretty decent for how cheap they are. It's a heavy little handgun, but it's a nice alloy construction. Or it might be steel, straight up steel frame, and it just feels like a solid pistol. This is the Spanish Star Model BM. So this is the shorter version of the Star Model B, which was kind of the Spanish answer to the 1911. It's not a clone, but it was highly influenced, as you can see. And there's some things that they changed around, but that's, again, a totally separate video. And these things hold eight rounds of 9 by 19 millimeters, so the ammo is very easy to find. The magazine's not so much, which is why it didn't make the number one spot. Got one more that actually beat this because of that factor. So, yeah, these things are fantastic. This thing is extremely accurate. This is the one that I got as a shooter grade from AIM Surplus back a couple years ago. And it was only 200 bucks, which is fantastic. Now, the best part about these is that price point. There's a few places, a few uh, primary source places, commercial places that are still selling these surplus guns. And they're going for between two and $350, mostly between two and $300. You're going to see, and for me, for uh, somebody that doesn't necessarily have a bunch of money to blow on a more modern handgun or whatever, but still wants something in a common caliber that will work, this is a great, a great um, option for those who want to get into the surplus game and maybe just want a handgun for whatever reason. Um, I've never had a problem with this thing. I don't know why people hate them so much. Maybe because they're cheap and people just assume cheap equals garbage, but I've not had a problem. Neither have any of my friends. So for number two on the list for affordability, functionality, ammo availability, this is going to be number two, hands down. The magazine accessibility, they are very expensive if you can find them. We're talking like 50 bucks a piece. If you only need one or two, it's not a big deal. But that does increase the overall price of the firearm, which really kind of sucks. I wish they were so much cheaper, but it is what it is. So number two on the list is the Spanish Star Model BM. Before we get to our number one choice, I want to do an honorable mention. And this one, it's not going to be this one specifically, but just kind of a genre of surplus guns that you may not have thought of if you're new to the military surplus hobby. So this is a Glock Model 21 short frame because I, for some reason, like a little bit smaller grips um, than the fatter ones on the regular Glock 21. The short frame works better. I just saw that AIM Surplus and a couple other places maybe had a batch of these law enforcement trade-in Glock 21 short frames for, I think, three or four. No, like four hundred dollars, 
And this is one I got from them years ago for I think the same price. It was three hundred fifty or four hundred dollars. Sorry about that. And it is it was unfired when I got it. It was there was no way this thing had been fired past the um, the confirmation shot at the factory in Austria because it was brand spanking new. And to get a brand new handgun like that for two hundred fifty bucks less than what they retail for, hey, that's good in my book. There's a lot of law law enforcement trade ins that are coming in now. They stopped being you know widely available for a couple of years. But now we're kind of seeing them again. And that is a great portion of surplus that's often overlooked. So when agencies either get too much, because this must have been, this, I don't even think this was carried. And I've got other LEO trade-ins that were just probably put in an arms room, were never issued out. And then when they change over their, their service weapons, they all get sold to companies and then they get sold to the consumer. So that's kind of the same thing as military surplus, right? And... It, I love this. I've loved this genre for years. I try to mention it every year on these videos because this is often overlooked. A lot of places have these. You can get Beretta 92 series pistols on there, Glocks, Smith & Wesson MMPs, various other police surplus trade-ins that are great. Uh, Glock Model 17s, 43s. Um, I've seen surplus Glock 34s, which are fantastic. Glock 22s if you're into 40 cal. So, yeah, LEO trade-ins are going to be the honorable mention. This thing is insanely reliable and accurate. It's just a nice Glock from the factory, and it happened to go through the hands of a law enforcement agency until it got to me. So there we go for our honorable mention. Coming in strongly at number one, and it has been for a while now, and oddly enough, it's holding on quite a bit to be a pretty nice contender for a military surplus firearm, is the Chinese Norinco Type 54 Tokarev pistol. This is also chambered in 7.62 by 25 millimeter but they're more widely available than the Yugoslavian M57 at this point, and you can get these from a variation of prices. I paid, I think, $200 for this one because it was a shooter grade from AIM Surplus, which means there was maybe, oh, wow, there's maybe a scratch right there, so they couldn't sell it as a regular grade because you get people whining and complaining about that, which is good for people like me because I don't care about the aesthetic stuff. Um, anyway, so these are between $200 and $350. They have them on their site right now. Other places have them on the site for $350. Again, for a handgun, that's really good. Uh, the ammo for a while is going to suck to get, but again, it's, it is produced commercially. They do make defense loads for it, etc., etc. There's plenty of content on the intranets about that. Now, this thing comes in at number one because of its its um, surplus kind of collectability and desirability. Up until recently, when these were imported a couple years ago, these were one of the most hard variants to find, most difficult variants to find in the United States. But uh, the only way you could really get one was if they were a bring back from the Vietnam War by a U.S. service member. And a few years ago, Albania released a bunch of these and sold them to the U.S. because they were getting a ton of Chinese weapons in the 60s and early 70s. And so these things were refurbished by the Albanians and then sold off as surplus a few years ago. Now, once these dry up, I don't foresee many more coming in. And they've been going strong for two years now. I might actually grab one or two more just because I love these things. And if something breaks or whatever, or you know, down the line, if somebody goes, God, I wish I would have gotten one of those. I have an extra one and all that stuff. And they're just, I just love having these like surplus guns. It's like, it's like potato chips. You can't have just one. I lo I'd love to have 30 of each kind just because they're fun and I'm kind of a weirdo like that. But anyway, so this is number one because the ammo, the ammo is okay, but the magazines are very readily accessible. They make new ones, eight rounders. And just the fact that these are available still on the primary market is a really big deal. So number one is going to be the Chinese Type 54 Tokarev pistol, chambered in 7.62 by 25 millimeter. All right, so let me know in the comments which one you like the most. You can also have the Glock mentioned in there, even though it doesn't really fit into this picturesque uh, metal gun. You know, only steel on my hip kind of display we've got going on here with the main five. But yeah, I mean, I like all of these. They have their pros and cons. They're all fun. I just love surplus guns because it's so cool to be able to try out different designs from different countries from different times. You know, I'm using a lot of like standard ammo. Like besides the Tokra, this is 32 ACP, which is a pretty common round in the U.S. So this is nine millimeter. So and 7.62 Tokra is pretty common in the world. So I, I guess pick your poison. But yeah, I like them all. I can't pick one. You know me. I can't do the favorite thing. But anyway, yeah, throw it down in the comments which one you like the most. So. It's getting tight, guys. It really is. Don't lose hope because, yeah, you've got things like these Chinese Type 54s that are still available. And they are uh, Curio and Relic Firearm eligible, which is awesome. So that's a very good thing. Anyway, we'll get this video wrapped up. I think we've gone long enough. Hope you guys enjoyed it. All you guys that were asking for it. I hope you guys um, like this and you're so by the content in this video. 
And anyway, so if you want to support my work and help me be able to afford ammo for these guys and things like that, you know, things like a gun channel needs to operate, uh, feel free to become a Patreon supporter or a YouTube channel member. Uh, five bucks a month or more on either method of support gets you into my Discord server, which is really fun. A lot of cool people on there. We have some fun stuff. And I actually learned quite a bit from my Patreon supporters on there. So very fun time. Also, if with Patreon, you have the added benefit of getting exclusive podcasts every once in a while that I do that I won't release on YouTube. So those are fun. Either me ranting about something or going on about current things with military surplus or just giving you a little brief history lesson that you may not have access to just watching my stuff on YouTube. So that's a perk. Anyway, if you can't support me financially, but you still want to support me, you can also share this video out if you thought it was fun. You know, subscribe if you haven't already. Give it a thumbs up or whatever. And then the notification bell if you're subscribed because a lot of people are saying they're getting... They're not getting notifications, but that's been the typical thing for five years now. You guys should already know that, so I'll stop wasting time talking about it. Anyway, I appreciate everyone who watches. You guys are awesome, and we will see you hopefully on next year's edition of Top 5 Surplus Handguns Under $500, because it's... Eh, we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.